What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Shamir and today we're going to be discussing some of the pros and cons of being a medical assistant. Plus, we'll discuss a little bit about the salary as well, okay? So if you're interested, make sure you just keep on watching. some of the pros that I came up with as far as being a medical assistant. Then we'll move on to some of the cons and also discuss the salary. Okay, so the first pro I would say about being a medical assistant is the fact that the training to be a medical assistant is usually 12 months or less. Um, the program that I did when I went to school to be a medical assistant was actually less than 12 months. When you think about it, to have a career that you can you know, basically work for years um, to only have to go to school for it for a matter of months is definitely a pro for a lot of people who, you know, just might not be that into going to school or going to college or, you know, they might not have had the best time in high school and they're like, look, I'm trying to be done with school. But on the other hand, they might want to have, you know, a career that will last and be in demand. And yeah. 12 months or less is definitely a great time frame to say you can start a new career. The second pro on my list about being a medical assistant is the fact that I personally found that you can get a job as a medical assistant whether you're certified or you're not certified. Now, I say that to say when I started out being a medical assistant, well, when I first finished medical assistant school, um, I actually didn't get a job as a medical assistant um, for my first job straight out of school. Um, I actually worked in the dialysis field. However, that helped me, um, you know, have medical experience and gain medical experience. So when I did go on to work a different job to where I actually had the title of medical assistant, I still worked and had the experience and all that. And they didn't mind that I wasn't certified because of the fact that I had already been working in the medical field without the certification. Now, eventually I did get a position to where um, it was required for me to be certified because the hospital that I worked for was like, okay, look, now everybody has to be certified. So, you know, years later, I did go ahead and take the certification test to actually get that position that I was going for then. but you know i found and there were quite a few other people and other places usually like smaller doctor's offices and places like that who were still willing to hire the medical assistants who hadn't yet taken their certification and you know a lot of the times it's not even just about the fact that someone doesn't want to get certified um because in my case it was just like i didn't need it so I just didn't worry about taking it, you know? And sometimes it might be that the person is gonna schedule the exam and you know, they wanna wait until they feel like they studied enough to take it. And um, you know, uh, there are a few places that will go ahead and hire you without a certification. There might not be a ton, but there are some. The third thing on my list of pros to being a medical assistant is that medical assistant jobs are usually very plentiful okay so usually you can look on um websites you know places like indeed and things like that and there are usually a lot of medical assistant positions and i know some of that is probably just based on you know the pay range that they pay medical assistants versus hiring an lpn to do it so um it's good though because I personally haven't ever really experienced a time where it was like rough seeing a position for a medical assistant. Like they're usually always on there. And you know, when you see those commercials that are saying like medical assistance is one of the highest in demand jobs and stuff like that, I feel like they're definitely being honest about that because I personally always see lots of medical assistant positions available. 
Number four on the list, which is probably going to be very helpful to a lot of people and was very appealing to me, is the fact that most medical assistants usually work for the physician's office, okay? And I say that to say that usually you can get hired on, let's say there's a larger hospital in your area. You're usually getting hired to work for the physician side of the hospital, whichever physicians work under that hospital. And the physician's offices usually have different hours than the regular hospital. So most of the medical assistants that work for physician's offices usually get the luxury of being off on the weekends and most holidays. Because a lot of the times, even if you work under the bigger umbrella of a hospital, the hospital will be open on Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like that, Black Friday, all those things. But the physician's offices, their managers usually pick their hours and most of the time the medical assistant gets to be off on holidays and for the most part weekends. But it just depends on which position you get. But usually even ones that aren't under like huge hospitals, like just smaller physician's offices, yes, you're usually going to be off on holidays and weekends. And the fifth pro on my list is basically the pride you get to feel working in the medical field. Um, I know when I first decided to become a medical assistant, honestly, was very on a whim. Um, I was like, okay, I want to do some acting stuff. My mom was like, you need to have something to fall back on. <laughs> and um, I was always interested in the medical field growing up when I was younger. And I was like, hey, this will be something quick that I can just do so that, you know, I don't have to worry about having her say I don't have a backup plan. And I was like, look, if I can do this, if I can do this quick within a matter of months, like I'm all for it. Didn't really intend on using it as much as I have, but <laughs> I was definitely all for it. So, um, but once I started working as a medical assistant, like I didn't really realize like how proud I would be of the fact that I had completed the program and you know, I go to work with my little scrubs on and be like, yes, look at me. I worked hard to become a medical assistant and I'm in the medical field and I get to help people. And honestly, I'm the type of person who just, you know, enjoys being able to help people in some type of way. So I definitely felt a sense of pride when I became a medical assistant. Okay, now on to the list of cons when it comes to being a medical assistant. The first con I would say right off the bat when I finished medical assistant school happened when I started my extern. Honestly, you guys, sometimes depending on where you do your externship at, you can get discouraged because if you're in a situation like I was in, um, the office that I went to do my externship at, they basically were constantly getting students to come to do their extern there, but it was basically to do their filing that their staff didn't want to do. So, you know, the extern was a couple of weeks and like at least for probably about the first two weeks, all I would do every day as soon as I went in there was go through this big basket of files that they had not been filing for months and sit and file paper after paper after paper. And it was a little discouraging because I was like, okay, look, I just went to medical assistant school. I just learned how to give injection injections. I just learned how to draw blood, you know, taking people's blood pressure and all of those things. And I was excited and ready to learn how to do it. And then I get to this externship and all I'm doing is filing all day long, like the whole shift and I wasn't learning anything extra. So at first I was starting to get discouraged because I was like, okay, is this what like work is going to be like for me? Did I go to school for this and now this is how it's going to be? But one thing I will say is for this, you will have to speak up. You either let uh, one of the instructors at your school know you know what's going on on your externship if you have any problems with how things are going on your externship you let them know they can either usually work out something for you to go somewhere else or they will contact them like they did in my case and let them know like hey she has a list of stuff that she has to get checked off on and we need her to be doing more than just filing papers you know i had the discussion with them first then i let my instructors know and then we were able to work it out to where 
I could do more than just filing papers. So the next kind um, was basically the fact that as soon as I started applying for things, everybody was like, okay, we want you to have experience. We want you to have experience. We want you to have experience. And did I mention, we want you to have experience, okay? So I was just like, oh my gosh, like how am I going to get a job if everyone wants me to have experience? Like I can't get experience unless you hire me and let me work so that I can get some experience. But I will say, don't let that discourage you. Um, sometimes you may have to take a different route to get your foot in the door, kind of like I did. Like I said, I started off mm, working in the dialysis field, not a traditional medical assistant position, but you have to keep pressing forward. Like a lot of the times you're going to find that you're going to see postings that say you need this many years of experience. I would say, look, just apply, apply, apply. And, um, you know, talk to as many people as you can, call some of the offices, you know, ask them if they're willing to take applicants who don't have as much experience, at least give you a chance, you know, write a convincing cover letter and go from there. Do not let the fact that a lot of places want you to have experience get you discouraged, okay? Another kind that I found was sometimes in certain offices, when you are the new medical assistant, let me tell you, you can definitely feel judged, okay? It's like you go in there and everyone's looking at you and paying attention to every single detail of how you do everything. And honestly, for a new medical assistant, it can be overwhelming. Like you have to have a little bit of a thick skin in order to be a medical assistant and jump into some stuff in the medical field because yes, when you get started, nine out of 10, another person who's been at the office that you're going to work at, that has been there and that has experience is going to basically shadow you or you'll shadow them for a, a while. And what's gonna happen is at some point, they're gonna be with you, you know, while you're rooming patients and doing things and they're going to see how you do things. So you definitely have to have, um, a level of confidence in what you do so that you don't get intimidated because when you get to these offices let me tell you they're definitely going to be like okay you know come with me i'll show you what we do this is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis you might get away like the first day we're just kind of watching and observing and seeing what's going on but let me tell you a few days in they're going to be like okay now i'm going to watch you Let's from this patient. Let's do this EKG. Let's draw this patient's blood. Let me see how you can do this and let me see how you do that. So that's one of the kinds if you are the type to get a little bit nervous about having people, people over your shoulder whenever you're working. But hey, it has to get done because they definitely have to know that you know what you're doing. Okay, so another kind that I found about being a medical assistant um, once I got into the offices and really got to working good was the fact that some of the offices that I worked at had um, LPNs and medical assistants, but you guys, we literally did the same exact job, but I was getting paid a few dollars less than they were. So honestly, you know, it's just something that happens. Um, you definitely have to consider the salary and all of that when you're making a decision on whether you want to be a medical assistant versus a nurse or anything like that. But, um, you know, it can get a little frustrating, especially if you end up working with someone who doesn't quite hold up, you know, their end of the bargain. They don't quite do as much work as you do and you feel like you're left doing the majority of the things that need to be done. But they're making more money than you simply because they decided to be an LPN and you decided to be a medical assistant. So you have to think about that too because there are definitely times when you can end up in those positions. Like I said, you guys are doing the exact same thing. You guys got hired to work for the same doctor. They draw blood, you draw blood. They give shots, you give shots. All of that and they'll be making more money than you. <laughs> right. And the fifth con um, about being a medical assistant that I thought about was just the fact that honestly, there's not room. Well, I'm not going to say there's no room at all, but there's not always much room for advancement as far as, you know, wanting to eventually move up to some type of management position or anything like that. 
usually those positions do kind of get offered more to the LPNs or the RNs who have been working in the offices. Um, I would say RNs definitely move up way faster than LPNs, but the LPNs then move up way faster than the medical assistants because like I said, you guys can be working for the same doctor, you and another LPN, and if something comes up to where there's a new office manager position available, just in my previous experience now, mind you, I haven't actually ever tried to be like the office manager or anything like that. I haven't ever been like, okay, I want to apply for that position and got beaten out by an LPN or RN or whatever. But I've worked in the office with plenty of people who have wanted to be the management and they have wanted to move up and they weren't able to or they might have entertained them but they usually always ended up going with whoever was the nurse versus the medical assistant it just happens okay <laughs> now one thing i will say though is that i have noticed one position that you can usually um move up to as a medical assistant if you work at an office that is very high traffic or you work for like a hospital physicians group that's high traffic if they have referral coordinators a lot of the times um, a medical assistant can move up to be a referral coordinator and um, if you don't know what a referral coordinator is is um, a lot of patients will need to see specialists or other doctors so they'll their physician will have their ma or lpn whoever is working for them send a referral you know all the patient's information to a referral coordinator and the coordinator then gets everything they need together for the patient any labs x-rays anything like that and the referral coordinator sends it over to the physician that the patient needs to see they'll set up the appointment for the patient then they'll contact the patient and let the patient know hey your appointment has been set up for this date and this time at this office and they'll also contact the doctor's office who sent the referral and let them know all of the appointment details as well but like i said that's usually a position that comes along if you're working with a larger group because if you're working in a smaller office nine out of ten you as the ma will have to do the referral paperwork on your own but if you are lucky enough to work somewhere that has high traffic and they have referral coordinators, you can definitely usually have a shot at moving up to be a referral coordinator and making a few more dollars doing that position. Okay, so now let's get to the stuff that I know you probably have been waiting for and that is the discussion on pay. What I will say is as far as MAs go, you definitely have to do your research for medical assistant salary in your area. Um, it's really as simple as Googling medical assistant salary and put your state or put your city and it'll usually tell you an average. Um, sometimes you can go on the average. Sometimes it might be a little bit lower. I know like right now, if you were to Google that for Louisiana or whatever, it'll probably say, um, around maybe like $13 or something like that. And that's a pretty good judge right now, um, uh, for 2020. You know a few years back not so much but um you have to know that it's gonna vary for your area now one thing i will say is depending on where you live like don't expect to be making 25 30 35 40 dollars being a medical assistant <laughs> like even with years and years of experience it's not usually happening that way um a lot of the times what you really need to do is be discussing and asking you know in the interview when you're applying for certain medical assistant positions is definitely what is the max out pay for this position because in my experience um now let me let me just say this first when i first finished medical assistant school you guys that was like so long ago okay years um I, you couldn't have told me that I wasn't gonna jump straight out of medical assistant school and make at least like $15 an hour, okay? So, you know, I had not did my research. Like I said, I kind of went to medical assistant school on a whim. So you have to know that being a medical assistant is not gonna be the highest paid job around. Um, 
a lot of the places that I've worked for, I found that, you know, when you go to do your review, usually this is what happens when you do a review, you'll see what the uh, max pay is going to be for your position. And a lot of the places that I have personally worked for, I experienced that the max pay was usually between $17 and upwards of $18. Um, I haven't ever worked at any place as a medical assistant to where the max pay was $19, $20, anything like that. So it's definitely going to be specific to your area, but I'm saying probably a good average for you to go on is, you know, somewhere less than $20 like I said, depending on your area. So make sure you do enough research about the pay so that you know if it's worth you actually going to be a medical assistant. Really what you need to think about is the timeline, okay? So after you go over those pros and those cons, you have to think about the timeline. Like, okay, if you know that you're just starting out as a medical assistant, but eventually you're gonna go to school for something else, then fine, you know you want to know your range that you can work with salary wise. But if you know, like, look, this is going to be it. I'm just going to school one time and one time only. Definitely, definitely make sure you do your research and see what the rates are for your area. And that way you'll know if this is something that you want to do. And honestly, I would just say as a rule of thumb, the best thing to do would be to look at whatever the lowest salary is on most postings for medical assistant positions. Like if you are going to go on like a job search and you type it in, what is the lowest salary that you consistently see and ask yourself, hey, am I okay with starting out with this salary after I go to school to be a medical assistant? That'll usually give you a good judge on what you're gonna make and you know, I would say if you want to do it and you're concerned about the salary, just look at that and see like, okay, would I be okay going to school for a year and starting out making whatever that lowest amount might be? It might be $10. It might be $13. Like I said, around Louisiana, the average is kind of like in that $13 range right now. But, you know, that's the stuff that you really need to do um, before you decide if you want to be a medical assistant. So yes, you guys, that's it. I just wanted to make a quick little pros and cons list. Um, trust me, I can do plenty more. Um, if there are, if you have any more questions or you want to have, you want to know more pros and cons on whether you should be a medical assistant or not, or any questions about medical assistant school or training, just drop me a comment down below and let me know, and I'd be glad to make you guys another video on it. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on your notifications so that you know when I post another one. Alright you guys, thanks for watching. Bye!